Dave here, how are you? Today is the 8th of December 2019, 11 o'clock Sunday morning where I am, Australian Eastern Daylight Time. I hope you've had a great week and uh, you can spend an hour or so with me. I'm hoping it'll be an hour. Sometimes it runs over, sometimes it runs a bit short. And this is the almost live because of my internet connection being absolutely rubbish. But if you've watched the show before, you will be aware of that. So I'm not going to dwell on that anymore. <sighs> here we go. What do we got here? The show this week, uh, we're going to have a look at Perspex. Now, Perspex is possibly a brand name, like Band-Aids are a brand name and Hoover is a brand name. But it's an acrylic sheet and sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's white, sometimes it's all sorts of different colours. It's a kind of a plastic. There's many different types, so I believe. Now we're going to go through, we're going to cut it. I'm going to try different blades to cut it. And I'm going to route it. I'm going to sand it. And what else does it say here that I'm going to do? Um, and plane. Of course, I'll have to use one of these horrible looking planes here. <laughs> so hopefully... That will take up most of the show. The other things we've got, um, viewers projects, and we'll do that probably first off. I've got one gentleman sent some stuff in. And last week, due to popular demand, Ian Kerry has said, yes, I would love to come back on the show. And it might even be next week. I'll let you know through social media if Ian has decided, yes, he can get a pass out. <laughs> <laughs> Come and join us for the show. Anyway, I'll chat to him during the week about that. Now, I want you to leave a comment down below. Now, this is probably going out as a premiere as well. You can leave comments in the side, but they all disappear after the show's premiered. That's after the first hour. Then if you can leave comments below and about what you're interested in for Ian to talk about, as in chainsaw blades, small yard machinery, turner hand tools, planes and chisels, that kind of stuff. If he's got a bit of a heads up, he knows what to prepare for and he can bring that along so you can be kind of interactive, but not, if you know what I mean. Like you can let us know prior to the show and then he'll be able to address those things. And he may even say your name <laughs> during the show if that if that floats your boat. <laughs> Crazy out of um, the last thing, of course, support the channel through Patreon and Amazon in the links below. And thank you so much to everyone who has been doing that. It, uh, it really does make a difference. Keeps me going and uh, keeps me keen to keep on bringing the show out. All right, I did say I was gonna have a look at the viewers project first. And also we've got the winner of the iMuffs. So don't go away yet. I'll, won't be too long, I'll let everyone know. All right, David Kansu. Now, I think that's how I spell your name, David. David, I'm going to throw this straight over. And David has sent in a story to me. Hi, Dave. Over the weekend, I was thinking about making some stools for my small workshop and came across your YouTube video, which was, of course, excellent, by the way, and <laughs> really motivated me to build these. A neighbor down the road had a lot of off-cut black butt timber used for her new kitchen floor, which she gave to me. Uh, I was going to use this wood for firewood. I used the black butt timber to make the stools. However, I had to double up, laminate everything to get the correct thickness, which worked out to exactly 38 millimeters. I'll go to the next picture. And there we go. Um, I've attached a couple of photos. I'm not an expert and do this more as a hobby on the weekend. I'm an IT project manager during the week. That is really, really nice. Thank you so much, David, for sending those in. And again, if you've got a project, it doesn't matter if you're starting out or, you know, if you've been on the planet for 150 years. Um, I say that because back in biblical times, they lived that long. You know, I don't know how, let me know how long Noah lived. And he was a pretty handy carpenter. He built a boat and uh, his boy, it was a family affair. All the, the sons helped. And, uh, you know, I'm guessing the... <laughs> sexist really isn't the wives would have brought down some food maybe they were swinging hammers too you know i don't know i don't Pfft. talking out my ear all right so what are we going to do we're going to have a look at this perspex and first of all i'm going to switch over to the other camera at the table saw 
and you'll probably see me hanging around over there uh, in the corner. Let me get the right camera, Dave. There we go. See, here I am, over here. I'm going to come over there and we're going to have a look at the type of blade that's in the machine and also hook up the dust extraction and cut one piece of Perspex to start with. <clears throat> Coming over here. All right, now this is the stuff that I'm going to be cutting out. It's called Lexan, Lexan sheet. So I'll, the reason I'm going to cut this is that I, I want to get a, a demonstration cut from this particular blade to show you. This blade is designed for Perspex. It has a negative three degree pitch or rake, I should say. So it rakes back at negative three. On either side, each blade alternates, each tooth alternates, I should say. And it's, it's not, I've got, I'll show you a picture soon when I finish doing the cut of the resharpened instructions that were on the packet. The, it, it comes up from the side to a point and then goes down. At, so it comes up at 15 degrees, I think, and then drops off at 45. And the next tooth does the reverse, comes up at 15 and 45 that direction. So it alternates, there's no actual really sharp edge on the blade at all at any point, which is interesting to quote my mother. That's what she always says. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know if she finds it interesting or whether she's just saying, shut up, David. All right, I'm going to put the, uh, the blade guard in and the riving knife splitter, whatever you want to call it. I use this because I do not want the, the sheet as it's going through to, to jam at all and catch on that blade and flick back at me. This is called kickback. If you use one of these things, your chance of surviving to your ripe old age is greatly increased. Okay, so these things are there for a reason. They hold the guard up, but the main thing is to stop the, the piece of material that you're working on getting caught by the blade, which is turning this way and getting thrown back up at you. And also, dragging your fingers in if you've got your hands there. It's all well and good to have saws that are looking after you as well, but at the same time, it's a good idea to have basic common sense happening. Right, now I don't want the blade all the way up because if it's all the way up on Perspex and even with other timbers, you're gonna have a lot of straight down cutting and it's gonna start chipping out the other side. So I'm going to lower the blade to about there. See that angle as the blade's coming into the sort into the table, onto the um, inset or the, the throat plate, whatever you want to call it. So it's, it's a lot cleaner cutting that direction rather than the blade almost going straight down if the blade was raised. Also, it's safer for you. Blade guard down, dust extraction on this thing is fantastic. And that one there, and this one goes up the top there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's an overhead guard there. Oh, sorry, an overhead uh, collection port. That, that can go up like that. I'll just check the width. And one side of this has been cut. The other side has been cut by someone else. And I'll bring it in a little bit. I think about there, it'll be fine. I'm just gonna do a test. I will be holding it down with my table saw stock guides from Jessam. And I notice a few people have been making comment on the video that I did about these things and about mounting them on my rip fence. I'll put a little link, I'll put a link up in the corner so you can have a look at the video of me making these and, and explaining how, why they're so good. All right, now we'll undo this and bring it across and with these, what you do is you drop it down onto the product itself on the guard, on the guide, tighten it up. And it's sitting it up, but that puts enough pressure on, these are spring loaded. So it puts enough pressure on the wheels at the back there to do the job for you. Now I'm set at 430 millimeters. I'm gonna take this back a little bit so I can set the back one. Done. Okay, 
back to 430. See, if there's things happen as I'm going along, it's crazy not to explain why whilst I'm doing it. We've got an hour. Why not utilize the hour? So I can now drop this and I'm going to use a gripper. If you haven't got one of these, do yourself a favor and get one. They're brilliant. They hold on like you would not believe. And the winner, I'll tell you later. <laughs> oh dear. Turn on the dust extraction. And I've got to stop talking louder when I actually got to find the dust extraction. Uh, where have I put that, David? Here it is. Found it. Stop panicking. We'll turn the. I turn the dust extractor on first on purpose. It has a very large start up ampage. It draws a lot of current. Um, so I've turned the table saw or whatever it is on second. There we go. That's pulling. Beautiful. And down through the bottom. Now, do you see any dust? Do you see any dust? It's still turning, so I'm very aware of that. It stopped. There's... That's all I can see. <laughs> that one little piece. I love this dust extraction. Now let's have a look at the, blow, at the cut. So that's, that's the cut I've just got from it. And that's a decent cut. I'll take it over here now and switch the cameras back and just checking that I did have the camera in the right direction there. Lovely. Move this and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to try cutting it with the track saw just here on my bench. Put that in. What I'll do now is I'm going to tip the camera down a little bit because I think it might be easier for you to see what's happening if I tip it down like so. Yep. Cut my head off in it, but that's okay. All right, I've got two dogs, yellow box shed dogs down here. If I come down here, you'll be able to see me. And I'm going to put in Two super dogs. At the back here, these things you undo, and as you tighten them up, it compresses these two O rings, which locks them in the uh, hole that I've put in here. Now you'll see it's not in the same line. I've got dog holes behind the, the grid, and I've got another one over here, and that just keeps everything, keeps my saw and track a little bit further away. So it works nicely. And the reason, then they go in. <laughs> They're going great. I'm gonna lift that ever just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yep, that's a bit better. Then I don't have to stoop down. All right, next thing is, we'll do the first cut with, um, actually I'm gonna put that dog back there. Yep because it's a little bit lower. Um, the, the material I'm cutting is a little bit thinner than the John's dog there. I'll put this on here and we'll use the these little fellows. I love these things, they're great. He's one of Peter Parfitt's inventions. He's a very clever man. 
and one from the other end. And we hook it onto the thing like so, and like so, and drop it down. Bring it along just a touch. Now, even though this is not over here, it's still really safe on this bench because I've got the non-slip rubber cushion on this. I can't, I can't move it even if I wanted to. So the more I push down on it, the more it's going to grab. And it's not going to scratch anything, especially with things like Perspex. I'm wandering over there because I'm getting my eye muffs again. All right, I'm going to use the TS55 with the standard, uh, I think it might be a fine cut blade. Let me have a look. It's got a 48 tooth blade in there. Yes, you, that's your fine cut. And I've got it set to not very deep. I'll drop this down. Like so, that's the um, that's the outside splinter guard, so it stops, or it's supposed to stop, the uh, the blade from tearing. But it's normally a little funny thing about that. It's normally so when you set the saw full depth of plunge, because uh, then the blade's actually cutting into that external splinter guard for your for your waste part. So if you've been concerned about why it wasn't working, that's why. All right, it's on automatic. It should work when I start it. Glasses. Give me a second. I'm going to have a quick look on the CapEx and see if it tells me what speed I should be doing acrylics. Uh, three to five. Okay. Three to five on the CapEx. So I'll drop this down to, from six down to four and a half. They've got these things on the saws fitted for you to take advantage of, so, you know, why not? All right, here we go. Was, that was the fine blade. Let's have a look, see what we got. And I'm going to go through a few different blades. Now that has a positive rake. Don't know if you can see that. But it's not too bad. Like it, it does the job, and I could plane that up if I wanted to. It's nearly as good as the table saw's cup. Right, I'm going to change the blade. To do that, I'll disconnect the power. Take it out of there. Um, move things around a bit. I didn't even get an eye on what time we started. So I'm guessing, I don't know if this thing tells me as I'm going along how long I've been. Yes, 19 minutes. There you go. So it's 20 past. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, um, change the blade. So I've got it set at 15, so I'll take it all the way down to the lowest point, lift this up, push it down, it locks in position. It's got an Allen key on board, and I undo it, it locks the blade, disables the power. Yeah, they're clever. Take that out. Showing you how to change a blade in one of these things at the same time. Take that one up. As I say, that was the fine tooth, I think. 48 tooth. And the next one I'm going to try is the aluminium blade. Now, Festool Australia have been promoting aluminium blades for cutting melamine and laminate just recently. Now, this has got a negative 5 degree rake, which means these teeth are leaning back, not leaning forwards like, like that. I'll show you on the other. Again, if, if this sounds like it's, I'm a little bit kind of stating the obvious, it's because there's a lot of people don't get to have this explained. I'll tip it up a bit more. 
Now this is a standard fine tooth blade and it has the rake forwards. This one, the aluminium blade, notice that the rake is going backwards. Yeah, if I hold it up a little bit closer. So from the center of the blade, if I was to draw an, an, a line straight out on the radius, these on the standard blade are leaning forwards into the cut. They're going to be trying to scoop and these ones are leaning slightly back. So they're not going to be as aggressive. So that's the one we're going to look at next and see if it makes any difference. And I was curious, I was thinking about using the diamond blade as well. This is designed for cutting hardy plank and you know, fibrous cement products. But we'll go with the aluminium one first. As I said, I'm just curious. Ah, where are we? Slider in. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. The riving knife is wanting to help too much. There we go. And this guy. Done. And the screw in the top that locks it into the arbor. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay, that's all back in. And the Allen key is straight away back in. Then to undo this, don't just release this because it goes clunk and it's gonna, you know, it's not good for the saw. Support it. And there you go. All right, put the perspex back in. I'll put this over here. Yes, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to have enough time to do a little bit of sanding, a little bit of planing as well. All good. And a bit of routing. We've already finished the table saw section of, of doing this, so we should be good. Pop these on. Feel free to leave comment as well as we're going along. If there's any questions, because I'll jump in on the premiere and I'll answer those questions during the premiere. Okay, I'll do it this way this time. That should work a little bit better. Okay, here we go. Whoops. I didn't set the depth. Let's do that. Take it back, keep everything equal. About there. I think that's, that's a huge difference. That is a much, much cleaner cut. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but that cut there that I just did with the aluminium blade, and I'm having a quick look here. Okay, see so this one beside it. This one was done with the fine blade. Huge difference. Absolutely huge difference. All right. Um, do you reckon we should have a go with the diamond blade? It looks like it might be a little bit aggressive. No, I'm not going to bother. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Uh, how are we doing for time? We're 25 minutes in. And I'm going to check my list as to what we've got on. Route, sand, a few different test cuts. Plane it. How about we do that? I'll move the other camera down here. Hmm. Yeah, so let me also let me know. Um, what you think about this new format, whether or not it's something you like, 
the video quality, the, like the, the clarity of the picture is fantastic. It's, it's in full HD. The other stuff I was getting, you know, we're dropping frames all over the place. It was abysmal, absolutely abysmal. And I'll take this out. Nice snug fit. And oh, with these things, if you find there that Peter's um, super dogs or some of the TSO uh, type dogs are a little bit too tight, just put a little bit of Vaseline on them and in the particular hole you're going to, into and on your bench. And there's a world of difference. It really is. Okay. I was going to cut some white borders, some white perspex as well. I will do that. So we'll have a, have a bit of a go with both. All right, where are we up to? And a clamp in this end. And a clamp in the other end. And I'm going to switch the cameras to the second camera. There. So I've just popped those in there. You can see I've got an edge there that's been cut. Again, I, I have to talk about the attributes of this bench. The sides are held against the cushion strip again. It's holding it really well and it's not, it's not going to damage it. So if you're using things like this stuff, works well. All right, number five plane. Let's have a look, see if it's, it's not too bad. <laughs> there you go. You tell me. What do you think of that? You like that? Now, I'm going to back it off just a touch and cut a little faster. So you back it up until the blade disappears off and then you bring it, then you return it. Okay, so it's, the blade has disappeared from underneath here. Never bring your hand back along the plane. Always go that way if you have to do that at all. I'll do a quick test. Nothing. A little bit more quarter of a turn. Nothing. Another eighth of a turn. Whoop, got it. Here we go. And again. <laughs> ah, look at that. Christmas decorations. Now, while I've got it there, I, I want you to see, I'll bring it the camera nice and close. There we are. Look how good that edge is on the perspex. Put my finger beside it so it doesn't try and focus on things behind it. From the cut that was there. Let me pull this back out again. And we'll go back over to the other camera. Back over there. What do you think of that? That's cool. I like that. See, using Perspex is fun. I've used it on um, jigs. I've, made, I've got a little kind of a router table for that I've got my trimmer in down there. And I use the Perspex so it's nice and easy. I can see through it, drilled some holes in it, got some uh, clamps, and I've held it down to make a corner. And why do I use the Perspex? I had it. It doesn't warp, twist, or bend too much. You know, heat will affect it a little bit, but it, it doesn't. Um, it's not affected by water. You know, I may even make a, uh, a sharpening station out of Perspex. There's a thought. I hadn't even considered that. I get these things. I don't know. Where does it come from? Ah. All right. I'm going to cut some white Perspex. Acrylic, whatever you want to call it. 
Aha! I was going to show you the uh, a picture of that blade if I've got it there. Let's see. Um, okay, and I'm quickly grabbing the picture for you. Image that one. I should have done it before I started. And there. And you know what? I have there it is. Okay, cool. Bring it in. So okay, and flick it across. There you go. For anyone who's interested, that is the dedicated Perspex and plastics, plexiglass and plastic blade. And it's from that particular one is from CMT Orange Tools. I'll go to the main camera again, and you can have a look at the packet. So that's its code, just there. If you're interested, double, oh sorry, 222.080.10M. That's for a 10 inch and it's got 80 teeth and they say to turn at 7,600 RPM maximum. Yeah, probably that's just a, a warning. Um, it's a 2.8, it's 2.2 2 by 30 millimeter arbor in the center. So I'm guessing it's 2.2 on the body of the blade and the kerf, which is the width of the teeth, which sit proud either side. Otherwise, if it was the same width as the metal disc, it would bind. So it sits proud by 0.6 of a millimeter. So 0.3 of a millimeter either side for the main body of the blade. There's a lot of technology and science goes into making these things that we just don't understand or don't really care. <laughs> All right, I'll put the blade down. How do you like that plane? Isn't it lovely? And then you can sand it and take it down to a polish, this, this uh, acrylic. And the, well, you see these things here. These are cellulose acetate. And you've seen me sa sand and polish these up. So it's the same kind of thing with the Perspex. That's what encouraged me to do it. Um, on, on those to sand them down because I've seen people do it before. A little bit of white perspex, acrylic, whatever you want to call it. And we'll move it along to there. Ah, I may even make the station out of something like this. I have these left over from my photography days. I used to make my own light panels. So, you know, these things in here, these, these lights over there, over, over there. Um, they're a diffuser and they spread the light out. So I'm doing a little bit more lighting as well. And I might, as I say, I might, might do that. These panels that I made were six feet by four feet, six feet tall, four feet wide. And I've got a couple of them. And I put the camera in behind them. They'd be come up close. So when I used to do a photography for Slazenger and people like that, I'd photograph their golf clubs. Now, golf clubs are very hard to photograph because they're highly reflective. So I had to build these big panels to take them. Where's the next thing? Here we are. Just thought you might be interested. As I say, this is almost live. So it's warts and all. I've had people say, particularly uh, Greg Wyatt, Dr. Greg says, you know, go with the new format, Dave, but just keep it warts and all. Well, I'm doing my best, buddy. <laughs> and that one on there, and that one on there. I did a video this, or released it this um, couple of days ago. I've got to pretend today is Sunday. Uh, it's actually not Sunday. Believe it or not, it's not Sunday while well, well, I'm doing this video. Uh, and it was on recharging a grease gun. So I know a lot of people just pack grease into the back of a grease gun. Uh, I get the little cartridges that slide in and I show you a few tips on how to bleed it. And also, if you think you've got an empty cartridge in there, a little tip that might save you throwing that one away and getting a little bit more out of it. Alrighty, I've got the aluminium blade. Well, it's not made out of aluminium. It's designed for cutting aluminium. Just before anyone pulls me up. Timing, timing, timing. 34 minutes. Alrighty. All good, all good, all good. This one again is the white, and I've got it set to the right depth. All these things you've got to think about. Here we go. Okay. 
Okay. Whoop. Forgot which one was which then. So that's the white acrylic sheet, and that's that's the cut I just did. I don't know if you're gonna see that. But it's pretty good. Take my word for it. Take my word for it, it's pretty good. Alrighty. <clears throat> and the I'm up winner. A little bit later. <laughs> All right. It wasn't Australia. I'll let you know that. That's really, really nice. One of the things, one of the reasons I'm doing the uh, things on Perspex, acrylic, whatever you want to call it, at the moment, I'm going to have people now say Perspex and acrylic aren't the same thing, Steve. Probably not. Um, the, one of the reasons I'm doing it is because I had a viewer get in touch with me and say, Dave, I'd love to be able to make those kind of, that jig, um, what would you call it? A fence, hold down support, locator, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and, you know, how easy or how hard is it to do with, with Perspex? And I... I got back to him and said, look, it's basically like working with plywood, except for it's slightly different blades, except for this guy. Now, this is a spiral up pattern following trimmer. So it's basically it's a trim bit. It's got two bearings at the top. Spiral up pattern. Remember when I say spiral up means when it's in the router, it's pulling all the uh, cutting is shaped to be pulling it up towards the router. Spiral down forces things away from the router. And I use a spiral down when I use the CNC now and then if I'm doing a pocket, where it means I'm clearing something out because then it looks after the fibers on the top. It's, it severs the fibers on the way down. This particular fellow would raise the fibers up and I run the risk of tearing, so the tearing the surface. So spiral up is very, very handy for trimming. The, uh, I was just thinking then maybe a spiral down would even be nicer for trimming because what you're doing is, say I'm, I'm doing an upstand the, along the edge of a board and it's sticking up like this and my trimmer is spinning away like crazy and forcing the fibers away from me. It's going to use the top as a support so it doesn't crack. There is the risk, spiral up, but it's turning at 23,000 RPM with those trimmers, so it's probably not much of a problem dragging it this way. Have I waffled enough? Let's set the camera up down there. I'll move it first. And back around this side. When I've done that, I'll come around to where you are. Now, have a quick drink on the way. And we've cut the white perspex, we've cut the clear perspex, we have hand did it with a hand plane. We're going to do a little bit of routing using this bad boy. And switch cameras, second camera. There it is. All right. Whilst I'm here, I can watch the monitor and get it into a reasonably good position. Maybe about there. That looks good. That looks good. All right. Now, I need a bit of perspex, but I also need to put that spiral cutter in. And what I'm going to do is I'll take this plate out. Come on. Got it. I don't have this in the switch which means i can't turn the machine on you gotta look after yourselves there's no one else in here with me except for you guys and if there was an accident well i gotta gotta be careful switch this that comes across and allows it to come all the way up if you haven't watched the show before, this is a Triton router. This is their three and a quarter horse. And it has 
a lock in the spindle that is activated when you turn the switch off on the router itself. It's a one-handed process. Pop the spanner on, crack it, and you'll rotate it, and it's still locked in tight. It's not going anywhere. There's a second grab, and you have to crack that one too. Out comes the cutter. In goes the spiral up. Now notice that it's going to start pulling the dust down, but it's down towards the router, which means, as I said before, it's a spiral up. If it's pulling the dust towards the actual router itself, it's a spiral up. So even though it's going to be pulling it down, it's a spiral up cutter. Now I tend to just tighten it up a little bit. I raise the cutter up maybe two millimeters. The reason being, I don't want this touching the armature in the, uh, in the router. I don't want heat transferred both ways. So let's just leave this. It's, it's not a huge thing, but it's just a little thing that I like to do. All right, tighten her up, because I don't want it going anywhere. Now I'm not talking about raising it up half an inch or anything. I'm just talking about bringing up a couple of cat's whiskers. That's, that's all. Lower it down a little so that I'm going to be in the right position. I'm going to put this yellow box shed guard on. There's chip deflector. Lock him in. What do you reckon? That's pretty cool. And I'm going to lower it down a bit more to about there. So the bearings aren't touching this the way that John and I designed it. It's, uh, it's just nice. If you want one, I've got links in the description box below, down right down the bottom where all the people you know help me up is uh, yellow box shed, and John might flick one in the mail for you. Now I've got it at that height, which I think is going to be pretty good, and it's got to be a little bit more than the thickness of the material that I'm going to be working on. I can turn the router on under there because it's controlled by this switch here now. Okay, so that's all good. And I will do a quick test. Plug this in. Beautiful. Now a bit of acrylic. I should have really cut a larger piece. But basically I'm just wanting to show you that you can you can machine acrylic with a router. Where's that other piece? There it is, found it. Found it, found it, found it. All right, this is the acrylic that I had and I'm going to put this on as a little kind of a follower. I'll flip her over and I'll cut this back a little bit. There we go. A little bit of my double-sided tape. Not a lot. There to there. Should have got a knife, David. I should have thought about that one. So every show, I think to myself, yeah, I've really got to make sure that I do that this time. Yeah. How often does it happen? There we go. Utility knife or craft knife, whatever you want to call it. Got it. And remember what I said about this stuff? I just scratch it up. Scratch the surface. Because I've got decent claws, so it works. There we go. Works ordinarily. <laughs> it's always a way. There we go. See that? Done. If you're concerned about getting stuff on your nails, there's other ways of doing this. What you can do is. Um, 
just use blue tape and a contact adhesive and that will also work. Let's see if I put that there. Okay. All right, so what I've got is I've got a little dip here and a dip there and back up to the same level there. So I'm gonna run it along until it gets to here and then turn the machine off. Uh, I will need to turn the dust extraction on. I'll turn that other one on. Open gates and close gates. And eye muffs. Turn this bad boy on. Yep. Alrighty. Where is it? Give me a sec. Found it. Now there's a thing that I could also use which steps down on the side of this to support it. I haven't got it here at the moment. I'll run with this at the moment. Make sure that's all going to be good. Yes. I'm going to let you see it a little bit better. There you go. That should be a bit easier for you to see. It's just, it's just another piece of wood, really. When you think about it, it's this stuff, the, the acrylic. You machine it just like plywood, except for sometimes there's going to be specialized cutters. I'll take this off. Got it. And we can use it on the jointer. So I'll run through the jointer as well. See how we're doing for time. It's 12 minutes left. I think we might get a few more things done. I'll bring the camera down here. Make sure we don't lose the connection. That's good. Should be okay. I'll check again. Yeah, fine. Tip her up just a little. All right, eye muffs, dust extraction, and we'll open this one up and close this one on the other side here. So anything you use timber, any tools you machine timber with, you should be pretty right with this stuff. And even sanding, even sanding, Dave says. Give me a sec, I'll come down to the other camera down here. Main camera. There we go. All right. Um, shall we do a little bit of sanding on it? Why not? Why not? I'll do, do a bit of hand sanding. These are snug. Beautiful. Gotcha. A little bit of hand sanding. So I'm going to get 
that piece of perspex that we just ran over the jointer and I'll plane it with the hand plane and then I'll sand it. There. I don't know how often I say it, but I love, I absolutely love this bench. If you're in Australia and want one for Christmas, I should be able to get one out to you. If you want one. Let's do this. That's pretty cool. Oh, if only I could take a photo and show you. All right, now, sanding. I said I was going to do some sanding. It's like, um, it's like basically any project you want to sand. It's to finish with a really nice finish, you're going to have to go to the polishers. But look, I think I'd probably start around about with that board there, I'm going to start at 220 grit and I'm going to use paper that's designed for the um, sander, but I'm going to put it on a block because I'm doing the edge. I'm not going to do the full length, I'm going to just work this end. I might go to Carl Cam. Yep, you can see me over here. Actually, I think I'll get the, the other camera and bring it back up and have it right on it so you can see what's going on. Got a couple of minutes left to go. Ah, oh, who won the muffs? Who won the eye muffs? Um, let me think. Let me think. Give me a second. Main camera up there. And then this one so I can see what's happening over there. Bring it in nice and close. Drop it down. Ah, oh, that's right. <laughs> you won. Um, if you live in New Zealand, you won. Well, not everyone in New Zealand won. Obviously, just one person in New Zealand won. And if your name is just turn that around is the suspense i'm doing like they do on tv and your points for your dessert you get a 10. <laughs> you read it you tell me ron thornton ron buddy you've won the i ups i'll get in touch with uh, I'm off and get in touch with George and ask him to send some off to you. So that is 320 grit. Okay, so that's not too bad. And I'm going to switch cameras, of course, because that helps. All right, that is 320 grit. And that's not bad. That's not bad. All right, so I'm going to step it up to from there. I'll go to oh, it'd be easier if I could see what's going on. Few minutes left, David. I'll go to 500 for the next one. This is a 500 piece of paper. Next one I'm going to is 800. The funny thing about the 800, it's stamped on the abrasive side. The other side is the Velcro, believe it or not. That's the only one that's stamped, and this is old paper that I've used on other things. But you should be able to see that coming up so quickly. 
It's getting smoother and smoother and smoother. See that? Okay, now we're going to go to the next grit, which is 1,000, 1,000 platen, this stuff. Put this on. All right. Now I'm going to go to 2000. Shut the door and we'll go to 4000 and then I'm going to hit it with some polish and you're going to be amazed. Here with the 2000 to start. I keep all of these and wash them. Did you know you can do that? If they're not stuffed, because sometimes they just clog up with a bit of stuff. And all they need is a wash. 4000. Yeah, so it'll be good to see Ian, and hopefully I'll get him here next week. So I need you guys to put some comments you know, I, below, not, not here in the, um, in the premiere, but below, and let me know what you want Ian to talk about. I don't know if you can see how good that is, but it's getting a reflection. And this is the part that was cut. This is, you see the difference straight away. You see the light tracking along it. See that? Shall we hit it with some polish? What have we got? 57 minutes. We've got, we got a little bit of time left. Why not do it with some polish? Alrighty. Just looking for my polishes. I didn't get these out because I thought, yeah, we probably won't get to that stage, but we will. So I'm going to start with a 5,000 speed cut and polish and a little bit of microfiber. You can use that if you want. Ordinarily, I'd be using Festool's pads for the larger areas. There we go. Just putting some on. Pretty cool. We go to eight thousand, shall we? I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm strange, but I love this stuff. You know, I don't get to see it anywhere else. You know, they send me down to training down at um, Melbourne now and then. I should really go again because there's some new stuff that they've got that I would love to see. This is um, Tool Technics I'm talking about, Festival. And if it wasn't for that, for them showing me, I wouldn't be showing you guys. So there's a guy down there who's kind of like the Grand Master of Festival. His name is Bruce. And Bruce is just such a nice guy. And also very, very, very clever when it comes to what Festival has to offer. This is not an ad for Festival. I'm just telling you, this is where I got the info from. How to do this stuff. I had to catch a plane and do all that kind of stuff. You guys are getting it for free. There's a little, there's a little plug for <laughs> supporting me on Patreon. If you can, that's great. If you can't, I totally understand. Wipe it off. All right, we're going to look at it from all different kinds of angles. Come 
come up and along. Anyway, believe me, it's beautiful. I'm going to now check what we've got. Go to the other camera, the main one, so I can see what's going on there. There you go. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, it was, it's an hour that uh, you'll never get back. <laughs> but hopefully there was something in the show that's, uh, that's helped you out. And uh, answer questions. If you were curious about things and thought, how the hell do they do that? It's not hard. You know, it's, not, it's not cold fusion. No. I'll talk about cold fusion next week. <laughs> All right, let me see what we've got here. I just want to check everything's done. We did perspex. We cut it. We planed it. We routed it. We put it over the jointer. We sanded it. And we polished it. We even went past what everything that I said we were going to do. Uh, the viewers project, we had a look at David um stools that he made. Good on you, David. Send me some projects in because it's so good to see what everyone else is doing as well. Um, Ian Kerry said yes to coming back on the show and I'm pushing again. Ian, I think we should do it next week. Um, and leave a comment, as I say, down below the description box about what you would like to see. Ian um, demonstrating chainsaw blades, turner hand tools, chisels, what have you, um, small, small yard machinery. Ian's a fantastic mechanic. As his own business doesn't have to do this, he says, Dave, I'd just love to come and hang out, <laughs> which is uh, very humbling for me. And support the channel through Patreon and Amazon links. I'll read out the patrons that I've got in a particular echelon. So it's Johannes Moa, John W., John Para, Vincent Yang, John Lafferty, Peter Woolworth, Brian Shaw, Brian Del Vecchio, Justin Bailey, Brett Guthrie, and a heap of people that are supporting me in the one, two, five, and ten dollar brackets as well. And thank you so much to all of those. Even the dollar ones, you don't have to do it. And I'm, I'm so chuffed that you do. Thank you very much. I think that's the lot. We've gone one hour and two minutes over. Thanks for watching. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. And I shall see you next week. Bye.